You crazy son of a bitch, you did. Catch up, Leith. I'll drown behind. What? You need to catch up. <laughs> Say that again. I said, do your damn job, Grant. So <laughs> he has a pneumonia. So when people buy their tickets to this One City World Tour, I'm gonna send them a confirmation email. I would like for you to record a video if possible. You know how you're very good at articulation and stuff. You know, the Savannah Bananas do a thing where it's like, hey, your tickets were printed out. They were then blessed by a medicine man. That are, you know what I mean? Like, kind of like, like hyperbolize it a little bit. Thank you so much for purchasing a ticket to the One City World Tour. Your ticket was just blessed by an ayahuasca shaman in the middle of a field in Montana and is being delivered to you shortly. Like real dramatic and send that to me via Google Drive if possible and we're gonna send them a, a, a message from Scott when they buy their tickets. Hey man, how are you? I don't think so either. I appreciate you reaching out, man. I apologize I'm a few minutes late. I was actually on the phone with Scott. Um, I was like two or three days in and we wrote a policy with Bass Underwriters and the client wanted to know how to pay the credit card. And I was like, uh, how do I take a credit card? You know, there's stuff that you're just not prepared for, you know, and I was telling, I, I say this often that, you know, I feel like I get $50 to death, you know, because you don't, you don't think about, you know, when you're captive or with a corporation, you know, all your tech and everything is paid for. And, and, and when you go independent, not only is the tech not as robust in a lot of cases as what you had on the captive side, but but it or it is not as robust and you have to like piece piecemeal things together you know because you have a system that does 56 of the 200 things you need it to do and you have to fill the other 144 things you know it does it does you know now some people that are in like middle america you know the ohio's kansas kentucky where every single carrier is going to be a blue-blooded american progressive safeco liberty state auto um, all state, uh, you know, carrier that downloads and, and all that kind of stuff, I would probably say easy links because they're going to be on the radar. It's going to be single start to finish. Um, but where, where, where I'm at, I mean, I may have three carriers that are on easy links and it's my three most non-competitive ones, you know, but the things, the things that allow us to move a little bit faster is our tech doesn't cost as much as some of the applieds and those and those guys um, you know i was talking to a buddy the other day that's paying fifty five hundred dollars a month for applied and i'm paying three fifty or three sixty for now certs combined with agency zoom um, and from a marketing sales tracking data standpoint my system is more robust um, so that that piece now you do sacrifice some some seamlessness and some workflows that you would get in an all-in-one system. So it's that, and then also our virtual assistants um, help us a ton because you know we, we've got um, four or five now, I think, virtual assistants over in the Philippines that help us with like our back-end data entry and stuff. It's like I interviewed a young lady who worked at a big agency here in town that was doing literally the exact same job my VAs are doing for less than and um, she was making $57,000 a year. I said, you cannot tell me in a net net game, I don't win the battle with them long term. I'm not, you know what I mean? So it's it's basically, it's the, it's, it's the speedboat versus the Titanic strategy is what it is. But no, it's good. It's good, man. Things are, things are, uh, things are great. We're just trying to get in the routine, you know, I'm the type of person that craves a routine. I have to have the, the, the structure and, uh, I have the opposite of that right now. So it's always humbling to be asked to be on other podcasts.
Yeah, so I, like a lot of insurance agents, I was a golfer growing up. Um, and I remember telling my dad, uh, and, I, and we interviewed, we've interviewed a ton of people. I don't know if I've ever had anybody say when they were a kid they, they wanted to be in insurance, but I was. Uh, I, I, I remember being a kid telling my dad, I want to be an insurance agent when I grow up. And he was like, well, why? And I was like, well, Mr. Bob and Mr. Chris are both at the golf course literally all day long. And, and they, they get to play golf, so that's what I want to do. And, and obviously that's not a great uh, uh, metric to gauge what you're going to do the rest of your life, right? So uh, and now, and of course I ended up years later getting into business and now I literally never play golf, have no interest in it whatsoever. Um, other than the occasional, you know, maybe taking a client out or going out with my brother-in-law or something like that. So, so, so my like long-term goal, like where Bradley wants to be 10 years from now is being able to invest in companies like startups in the insurance space that I believe in and run them through my machine of Insurance Guys podcast and essentially put them on the map for lack of a better analogy. Increase the value of my investment, that sort of and, and then hang on, you know, you know, hold on for the ride and the exit or whatever. But what's happened here recently is the ability to I've, I've had the ability to get some equity in some companies, three or four companies in the insurance space. Uh, some cases I had to put money on the table, some cases I didn't. And that's been super interesting because it's a way, like, I never expected that to happen like it did. You know what I mean? I never forget I had a text from a, bud, a good buddy of mine in the space that uh, I had ignored his phone call and he texted me and said, I'm trying to make you a millionaire, answer my phone, a-hole. And, or answer my call, and uh, and it was it was a deal to get some some really low priced equity in a company. So those kind of things have been super interesting, and I really enjoy doing it. And it's not about the money at all. I just enjoy doing that, you know. So there's that. Uh, the other thing that we're doing. So we're actually. Uh, I apologize if you're not okay with me dropping this, but uh, we're actually uh, today going to announce our first mastermind slash conference event uh, so we're doing we're not calling we're not calling it a conference because it's only 100 people but we're, we're doing a hundred person uh event in denver colorado uh, in, in conjunction with our sponsor um and we booked uh technically we booked the denver broncos stadium for that now it's just a meeting room at the denver broncos stadium but the ability to say it's at mile high stadium has some some a little bit of uh jazz to it uh so we're, we're in the process of firming that up right now. That's going to go live today. We've already sold. Uh, we've got about a third of the event paid for with the tickets we've sold. But uh, look at NFT. I'm pretty sure the specs can be whatever size you want. I don't think there's really a, a dedicated size for NFT. Okay. Yeah, yeah, just do a square. Yeah. Just make it look digitally. Okay. You know what I mean? So like almost like eight bin or something? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, only 10 of those, I think I gave you like four. So what'll happen? Wake up! Happen, I feel like we'll get um, more ideas from the first few. Yeah. I may even bring Scott in and he's low boxing on a couple of them. Do one, uh, this the cease and desist. Just have like, make it look a legal document. It's like blurred out or whatever. Because so the reason I say that is that the love box um, when they first started they, they came real hard at people and got a bunch of cease and desist mm -hmm. so, and now they're like people are opened up to them and that's the name of their podcast is the cease and desist mm -hmm. podcast cool. so do one do one for that for them um, I would almost for TikTok I would almost make the account so so the things. And Grant's actually here, he can disagree or agree with me. To me, the things, the people who are doing TikTok pretty well for their business are going more the educational route and it's more like life hack kind of context. And it's like, hey, here's, you know, because the thing is like, like you and I can sit here and talk about how to get a checking account and the majority of the younger people on TikTok probably have never done that before, so that's valuable information to them. Not saying you necessarily do that, but I would almost make it like, like if you're focusing on renter's insurance on TikTok, I would almost make it like renting hacks or something to that, if like, like that's the account. 
You know what I mean? And then you can still like brand it Stonebridge or whatever, but almost take that angle of like, hey, here's a here's a trick you didn't know of how to make sure you get your deposit back and things like that. And then, you know, kind of sandwich that around insurance advice and stuff. But I think that's a phenomenal idea. And that's just like the first thing. That's hot and steamy advice coming from a guy who's given no advice in two months. So I don't know if it's really good or really bad, but, um, and, 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 and I've been guilty of this. We all have been guilty of this a little bit. You get into this agency and you're starting it. And the number one most important thing is putting revenue on the books. You gotta keep the lights on and keep the toilet flushing and all that stuff, right? And so you get in and it's so easy to fall in that role of me as the agency owner. I'm doing the selling, I'm doing the selling. Instead of, hey, let's make a little bit less on this sale, but let's have somebody else do it. That way we're maximizing our time. I think a lot of people fall into that trap. And to be completely honest with you, I think more people fall into that trap on the independent side than they do on the exclusive side. I think that's one super big advantage to us highlighting agents on the captive side is, is you guys are really, really good agency owners. Most of the ones I know are anyway. It's working. So we're making a video which involves liquor. Um, but it's also nine o'clock in the morning, so we're doing some movie tricks. Let's look it out a little bit on the side. The one thing I've learned from this is that there's far less liquor in these bottles than I thought. <laughs> because this is a tiny bottle and it's almost filling this thing up. <laughs> 